For me, kayak fishing is simple. A boat, a paddle, a fishing rod, and unspoiled water. The fish are big. Chaos is beautiful. It's angling's addictive final frontier, and I'm hooked. I'm Drew Gregory, and this is Hooked on Wild Waters. I am so excited to be on the Petey River with my friend Dan Mullane. He's got his own lingo, his own verbiage, and quite honestly, he's a guy you're not gonna soon forget. Z-Man Chatterbait. What else can a brother need? Looking forward to catching a couple over five and shaking off the little ones. There we go. You know, this could be either hit or miss, as damn fishing always is. If the water's on and the fish are active, and all, all the life is there in the birds, then it could be an amazing, you know, stellar day on the water. If it's not, there's no telling what we may have to do. We might have to float down the river. I don't know, but we're gonna get up there and we're gonna find out. So when we first get out there, we notice the water level is a little bit lower than I would like it to be. I really want it, you know, up high and turbulent, just like a, a washing machine for all those bait fish. And the fish get really active because there's a lot of easy prey out there. Just gotta figure out, are they right up against the dam? Are they up against the rocks right here at the end of the pool? We'll find them. So as soon as we get up closer to the dam, which is usually where the most action is, I throw this uh, chatterbait out there and then all of a sudden, wham! I got a huge, huge largemouth bass on. She doesn't even know she's hooked hardly. Looked like a striped bass, or no, it's a, it's a largemouth. It's a nice one, four or five pounds. This thing is fighting me hard. It's, it's just chaos out there with the wind and the waves. Come here, girl. No, don't jump. Don't jump. Don't jump. Come on, no. And finally, I pulled in, and it's about a six and a half pound largemouth bass. Okay. Woohoo! Yeah! There we go. Maybe he's about six pounds. It's a nice fish there. Oh, Malay! Look at this beauty. Oh, wow. What a fish. This is why you come to Wild Waters. You put up with all this chaos for one of these girls. This is a beautiful fish. I've got to, you guys have to see this a little bit closer up. Definitely a trophy by anyone's, uh, you know, judgment. I'm thinking to myself, this is gonna be a banner day. This is going to be the day that Dan and I were hoping for. We're just gonna lay into fish all day long. The dishwashing machine pays off. Good fish. But of course, as damn fishing can be, it can always just change like that. And they did something with the water, and all of a sudden, no more bite, nothing's happening for several hours. The bite's getting tough. So you just gotta keep on keeping on. One five will change the day. It was very frustrating, so we had no choice. No choice but to finally head downstream, fish the banks a little bit, and hope we can find some fish on some wood or on some rock. So we've lost a little confidence. The water dropped right off the bat from that dam. Again, they, you know, they gotta run water sometimes for electricity, and they ran a bunch of it, and that's sometimes when the fishing's good. Now we're sort of dividing and conquering because it's been frustrating. We just, we just need some hope. We decide to take a break for lunch and maybe something will change after lunch and the fish will turn on. The more I can learn about the environment around me, including man-made environments like dams, the better angler I can become on the water. I called up Duke Energy and they connected me with George Gallagher. He decided he would give me a tour of one of the dams, actually the Catawba River Dam, right below Lake Wiley, so I can learn more about this entire process. The Wiley Hydro here impounds Lake Wiley which is a 13,000 acre lake. Actually, when you think of the Catawba River, about three 
1,000 uh, square miles drains through this dam right here. Through up on this upper deck here, you can see Lake Wiley is behind us here, and then the tail, what we call the tail race, is in front of us. And that difference in elevation is what actually drives that that energy difference drives the turbine that then allows us to produce electricity here at Wiley Hydro Station. And what else is cool is you guys are always considering uh, the fishermen, you're considering those on the lakes and the motorboats. Uh, obviously they're also made for drinking water. There's a lot of people that you're having to kind of manage and, and, and please in this process. How does that work out? A, a lot of multiple uses as you describe. And, um, uh, so we, we look for we look at the uh, recreation interest, we look at the fishing interest. Then Lake Wiley is right now in a, what we call the Lake Stabilization Program, which allows the, the uh, particularly largemouth bass and the centroikids to spawn. And we hold to hold the lake level within a very short uh, time range for three weeks. I mean, I had no idea that, that you guys were doing all this and making sure that the animals and the wildlife are happy and obviously so we can be happy. I mean, obviously it's a valuable resource and you guys realize that and we appreciate you guys putting in the time. Below dams can be a treacherous environment. It can be a great environment to fish when the water is low. Like you said, whenever a lot of water is passing through and at any moment's notice, it could change. So check out some dams near you and a lot of you know the power companies do have a website where you can go and learn more about when they're going to be releasing water so you can fish effectively and safely below these dams. George, thank you so much, man, for you know showing us the entire plan and how it all works. And thank you for what you and the folks at Duke Energy do for us so we can you know, fish these waters and have fun enjoying the fishing and the wildlife. So we really appreciate it, and thanks again. Glad to. You see stuff like this, different freshwater snails and you know mussels and clams and oysters all these things, whether you're in a freshwater environment like this or a saltwater environment, whenever you see this life, because these things obviously were alive, you know there's other life around, and that's where you want to be fishing. You can see the birds are around here feeding. We've seen evidence of raccoons and beavers and otters. The more variety of species you see like this, the healthier the ecosystem is. If you see less species of this, you know it's not quite as healthy and it's probably on the decline, sadly. So during lunch, Dan and I decided to put a stick in the water so we can see if the river level changes at all. And of course, as we start eating, a few minutes later, we notice it's getting higher. We look up at the dam, we see the water starting to really pour over the dam now. We think, we gotta finish this lunch, we gotta get up to that dam again to give it another shot. You think we can paddle up that? Can we paddle up? Yeah, I guess. And I'm fighting this current. It's actually so strong, I can barely even get up the river. <sighs> 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 I'm digging in, going as hard as I can, hard as I can, grinding, and all of a sudden, I feel my hand get just the sharpest pain in it, and it just gets stuck. Just bam. So now I've got a big, big issue. I've got a hook in my hand, I'm bleeding, I'm in a lot of pain. Fortunately for me, I invited a good friend of mine by the name of Matt Frazier along to help out with a shoot, and he knew the trick where you can tie line, or loop line around a hook, and you can pop it out of someone's hand. I've had it done to me several times, and believe me, it works. One. I was not about to let this hook stop me from catching those fish. So I bandage up my thumb and we continue to paddle upstream towards the dam in hopes of catching those big fish. As soon as we get back up to the dam, now I'm seeing more of the wildlife I like to see. The birds are active. I see fish jumping and shad moving right up against the dam. I think surely the fish are going to be feeding now. All of a sudden I get up there and make this cast. Wham! Fish on! There she is! There she is! Oh yeah! And then I get it all the way up to the kayak and it comes off and it looked to be about a 10 pound striped bass. It's hard enough just getting up here and then actually getting a fish on and fighting it in this incredibly just dishwasher, washing machine environment. To have it come off at the very end like that is very frustrating. But that's okay because I know where there's one striped bass there's always many many more. So I throw back in there, I hook another fish. I'm gonna bring her on this right side if I can. You gotta wear her out first. I'm using 50 pound tests too. I'm not playing games with these fish. Fight it all the way up to the boat again and it gets off again. I'm so frustrated right now. Oh my God, it came off again. Right at the boat, again, right there. <sighs> Cast again, I know there's more there. Surely this is gonna be the one. And I hook this fish, and it is a big, big fish. It's a monster, I can tell it's bigger than the other two. Oh! 
Oh, shoot. This is a nice size striper, clearly. Look at her, I'm scared. There's a lot of rock down there and I can't pull her. I can't even turn her. I gotta go chase her or I am, this is done. So now, I unhook myself off of the power pole and the branch I was on, and this striped bass just tows me around the base of that dam. Fortunately for me, I eventually put a hand on that fish and I brought her in. It was a massive, probably 15 to 20 pound striped bass, which was an amazing fish, especially out of a kayak. I'm literally out of breath. That was one of the most difficult fights, but that's why I call it beautiful chaos. I mean, the water is chaotic, it's turbulent, it's crazy. But this is beautiful. And that fight, it just took me on one of the wildest rides. It got caught up in rocks and sticks many times, living in the swiftest, most turbulent environment. This thing's built like a torpedo, so it can handle it. Look at that thing. You can tell I just choked that chatterbait. If I didn't have a one ounce chatterbait, there's no way in the world it falls fast enough right below those whitewater rapids coming off that dam for this fish to eat it. No way in the world. Actually, I was throwing a three-quarter ounce before that was not getting bit in the same spot. It just goes to show it's a very scientific process. I mean, catching these fish, you can really break it down, and one little small thing can make or break it for you. So as fate would have it, as I'm over on the bank showing off my big striped bass to you guys, I hear Dan hooting and hollering right behind me. He's got a big fish on as well, and he is pumped. So I wave Dan on over, and I'm like, man, come on, show off that fish with me. And sure enough, it is a big striped bass as well. Finally, you guys can see hey, you know, why we're this hooked time. on wild waters, right? Man. You gotta say that, that's like the tagline, dude. You gotta say like, this is why I'm hooked on wild waters. I am always hooked on wild <laughs> waters. That's the only thing there I want, is. and this is what it brings me. Exactly. Hooked on wild it. waters, yeah. come and get you some. She was not coming nom, off. Nom, nom, nom. There we go. A chatterbait in my mouth. <laughs> All right, they're looking pretty good. Swim on. There you go. She go. There she goes. There she goes. Wow. Woo. Look at that. Woo. <laughs> that was the worst high five ever. Ah. I'm slipping on rocks. <laughs> My arms are burning. We had a workout today. It was worth every bit of the effort to get up here. You can go to so many places they are much easier to get into and access. But the feeling you get after catching a fish like this in this environment, it just is never the same. It's never the same. Isn't that right, Dan? The current makes them fight twice as hard, and it's more rewarding when oh, you yeah. got to work for them. And there could not have been a better way to end the day getting hooked on wild waters in that scenario with two big striped bass at the same time. Drew Gregory's Hooked on Wild Waters has been brought to you by Jackson Kayak, we make fun. GoPro, be a hero. Bending branches, pretty, smart paddles. Orion Coolers, never lose your cool. 13 Fishing, make your own luck. Z-Man Lures, the science and art of fishing.